good schedule. Hello. How y'all doing today? Y'all look like you've been blown up, been a little weathered out there. You got that little weathered look on today. <laughs> hey, man, good to see you. I tell you what, we had a great first crowd. You know, it is September. You know, we don't have, you can't find a snowbird in the area. You know what I'm saying? And if you had any, they, def they definitely flew to Clue last week. No doubt about it. But uh, Anyway, but it's uh, just generally home folks, the folks that live right around here that are here. And uh, But we had a great crowd this morning. This was looking good if we could get them from outside in here. Amen. Thank God we live in America. Thank God that uh, you live in Inglewood. I'm going to tell you something. And I told a couple, I've told a few people this. You know, I think there's really no wrong, wrong move really when it comes to a hurricane. Guys like me are going to stay. That's the way it's going to be. We're not going to be stupid. We're going to hunker down, we're going to shut her up, we're going to get the food, we're going to get the water, we'll be ready, but not get on the highway. That's just me. Other people, they get on the highway because that's them, and that's okay. You do what you got to do, amen? But I'm going to tell you something, Inglewood's an awesome place. I've watched it for 30-some years. Storms hit the land, they hit the land, they hit the land, and it slows up. we got a cool location here. And I just think, can we thank God we live in Inglewood? Can you do that? Come on. Come on. I've watched it time and time again. It doesn't mean you don't. It could be the big one. It could happen. I get that. I get that. But I'm going to tell you something. You always want to be wise. You always want to be wise. I get that. But uh, like the governor saying, get out. Get out. Are well, you still can. I told the first crowd, he can say that. He's got a helicopter, okay? You know, get out and no gas. And it was rough, right? How many of you lost your power? Can I see your hand? You lost your power. How many would say, I still don't have power? Anybody in the building doesn't have power? Just us? Huh? Just the bitch and Elise don't have power. <laughs> That's true. They're lying. Got a big tree fell, laid on their house. It didn't tear the house up, but it did tear the line up. We had, had tore the weather head on top of the house up. Amen. It broke a fence that I fixed yesterday, by the way. But anyway, we're all good. Can we thank the Lord that we have power? Come on, come on. You got friends that are helping you. Honestly, when's the last time before this storm that you got up one day and you just started your day saying, thank you, Lord, that I have electricity? We're so spoiled, aren't we? Yes or no? In America, aren't we spoiled? Come on, let's get on our feet. We're ready to roll now. I'm ready, I'm ready. Just wanted to get some more folks in. Special day today. We don't do this often. We usually have communion on the first Wednesday of every month or at the beach or something. But today after this service, we're all gonna gather out front. And we'll have the communion will be served on the way out. It's quick. And we're gonna gather in front of those crosses while it's hot. We're gonna sweat like pigs. And we're gonna thank God that we were spared, amen? That's what we're going to do when we get out there later. God is going to bless us this morning. It's awesome, man, amen? Praise the Lord. Well, welcome today. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. I met a young man this morning, Austin from Carolina. I told him, son, I talk just like you, amen? So I get to be me, you get to be you here, and uh, we both need help. Jesus Christ is the one we're following. Amen. He's the one. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. One more time. Get some noise out of you. Let's thank God we live in America. Here we go right there. Boo! Here we go. Let's sing a, a, a new song. We did it once before. It's called You Make Me Brave. Come on. You're going to love it. Thank you, guys. Let's go. I stand before you now. Crush 
you're a child of God, all he has is for you to blame God or you to complain against God. That's what he has. He can't, the Bible says we can't be plucked from our Father's hand. Did you know that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you cannot be removed from his love, period. It ain't happening. Okay? But if you earn your way to heaven, that ain't happening either. You think you can give enough to get yourself into God's hands? No, Jesus Christ came he died on the cross he rose from the dead so you and i could be saved so now all satan can do is get us to blame god you know but i'm gonna tell you something that song got me first service this morning because as troubles come in my life those waves come crashing on you and a lot of y'all been there the beauty is it can make you stronger make you trust more in god's grace and, and just, I tell you, that's something you stop blaming him. You start reaching out in love to God and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being with me. Even when other people leave me or walk away, you're faithful. Amen. Did you get my drift? Amen. Wave after wave, you make me brave. Wave after wave, you make me brave. More trouble comes, stronger I can get because, God, you teach me you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Amen. Beautiful stuff. We're going to go old school this morning. We had a, we had a bad storm. And we want to keep those in prayer across our state and down in the islands, the Virgin Islands and St. Thomas and St. John's and the Keys that I love so much. Where did we vacation as children? What was the name Cujo. of the key? Cujo. Cujo Key. You know where the eye of the storm hit? Cujo or Cudjo we called it. We've been going there since y'all were little kids. And then they can't get down there. But I want to get back as soon as we can to see, you know, what we what we saw down there and how we, it, it's going to be fine. They'll rebuild, amen, because this is America. Did you know that, say? You lived in another country, things get wiped out, they go, well, it just got wiped out. In this country, when things get wiped out, we get working, amen, say. Aren't you glad you're in America today? Aren't you glad you live there, yes or no? Amen. Punta Gorda, Punta Gorda got blew away by Charlie. Punta Gorda's better than it's ever been. I used to not even want to go to Punta Gorda. I'm like, look at old Punta Gorda. Now Punta Gorda's pretty. So things in America, when they get blown away, we build them better. We build them stronger. We come back with, with a vengeance. Amen? That's the truth. Is that the truth or not? That's the American spirit. But I give God the credit for that spirit. That's him working in us. Amen? Giving us strength and us having faith in each other. Amen? I could talk all day. Let's sing the song. Quit looking at me like that. 
Let's sing old school, baby. Amazing grace. Let's thank him for his grace this morning as we sing this song. Come on, church. Let's go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. at church. Man, I was here last Sunday morning. That's no joke. I got up, came over here about 8 o'clock like I always do. Not a soul here. Hey, if I'd had my druthers, we wouldn't cancel, but we have to. We're in a flood zone. I called the county. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? I called the county and said, we want to be a place of last resort. We did that on, you know, Tuesday when we knew the storm was coming. And they rejected us, being a place of last resort. I said, so you're rejecting me. Is that what you're doing? And she said, we're rejecting you. I said, well, I just wanted to hear you say that. I said, I want you pulling a Joel Olstein thing on me. 
That's what I told her. So let me pull that Joel Osteen thing off now. You know, we want to offer, want to do what we can. We came out here. I came out here just to see if somebody might be here. I came out here again on Monday morning after the storm. Soon as sun was up, I was here. And this building, I'm going to tell you something. It was standing tall. Pretty as could be. And I know there was limbs blown down, but I didn't see the limbs. All I saw was how good the campus looked. And I just praise the Lord, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Can, you, can we thank the Lord again? This is a good thing for us. Amen. Come on. Woo! Amen. Anyway, let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for sparing our city, our little town of Inglewood, the greater community here, Lord. We give you credit for that. We give you credit for every good thing in our life. And Lord, we thank you for lives not being lost in throughout this area. And Lord, I know that folks were damaged horribly below us and down through the keys. And Lord, I ask for your help for them. Lord, I pray you'll use us as we've been seeing. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of America. I see it, Lord. I see it, Lord. And Lord, I see it in people that don't even know you as, as their Lord and Savior. But I see them helping. I see them doing. And Lord, I want you to know that when I see them doing that, I'm giving you the credit, Lord. I'm giving you the credit. Lord, I believe you've been behind from the very beginning, the founding of our country. Lord, I believe that. I believe we're here for a reason. I believe we have freedom to worship all across this land, Lord, because our founders, our forefathers, they established that. Thank you, Lord, that we live in this great country. Thank you that the first day of every week we can have church. We can come. God, we give you credit for that. So, God, help us, Lord, to bind together. Help us, Lord, to help one another. And, Lord, I know we've got a, a large congregation that's out there doing, they're serving, they're giving, they're helping. And, Lord, I pray that we'll be generous as a congregation. We'll be very, very generous to help people. Please, God, work through us, work through others. Help us get others back on their feet, God, we pray. We're going to give you the credit for all of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Thank you much. Be seated. Miss Rachel, back from, where'd you go? We were in McDonough, Georgia. You were where? In McDonough? McDonough. It was just south of Atlanta. I know where it's at. Yeah. All right. I called up my old college roommate. Well, she lived next door to me, but anyway, I considered her roommate. And I said, Roxanne, can we come and seek refuge? And she said, my house is full of Argentinians, but you can go stay at oh, my mom's boy. house. <laughs> Did you have some sweet tea? No, because I don't drink sweet tea. Oh, I'm... I'm but I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm no. I'm from Kentucky. I'm not from, like, you know... How many Georgia. people from Kentucky drink sweet tea? Look at you. No, you, you need to find out where you're from. I know. No, my dad drinks sweet tea. It's all good, but I, I, don't, do, I don't do sugar anyway, so whatever. Okay. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not I drink it. Welcome to Fellowship Church. I'm very excited that you all are here with us today. Um, back to a, a bit of a normal for all of us from this crazy week. If this is your first time with us today, we want to give you a gift. So if you would let us know that it's your first time, um, if you go out these doors right behind um, where Roger sits, there's a nice little table out there. Uh, and there's a gift for you out there if this is your first time with us. We want to bless you with that gift. We also want um, to know how you found us here at Fellowship Church. So if you take the, some time to fill out the guest registry in your worship guide, drop it in the offering bag. Pastor will send you a note of encouragement in the mail. He's not going to come and knock on your door. Um, we do love to know how you found us here at Fellowship Church. So please take the time to do that for us and welcome today. There's a special communion service, as Pastor said, following this service immediately. So you're going to go out the doors, you're going to grab your elements, and you're going to go out by the crosses. Hopefully it's not too hot out there for you. Um, just move quickly and you'll be fine, yes. But it's a great time. We did it after first service and it was absolutely beautiful. So please take the time to stay. There is no YFF or no blast this evening. Um, we want our families to stay at home, get ready for the upcoming week. I know school's been out, so school's getting ready to start back tomorrow. So be with your families, live on your families, and get them prepared to go back to school tomorrow. And we will pick back up next week, hopefully. Yes, we will pick back up next week. Our senior fellowship luncheon is this Thursday at 11 a.m. right here in our lobby. We ask that you sign up today. You are going to have baked steak. Did you hear what she just said? <clears throat> baked steak, country style steak this coming Thursday here at the senior luncheon. Best stuff ever. How many ate too much during a hurricane? You ate like a pig. 
Well, come on, one more time, one more time, one more time. This is good stuff. Come on out. One more time, yes. One, had, just one more time. Yes, don't feel guilty about it at all. The gym's open. I went yesterday. They had air. I was very excited. This week's Bible study opportunities, um, several throughout the week, with Monday, our men's Bible study at 630 at the church office. Tuesday, back here at the worship center for a men's community Bible study at 7. And then Thursday, um, a men and women Bible study fellowship on Thursday at 630. And then there's a women's Bible, a home Bible study at the Jackson home Friday at 10 a.m. So there's lots of opportunities for you to get into the word. So please take advantage of those opportunities. And we do have a share -a coming up this Thursday and Friday morning. We ask that you call in and support this radio station that um, is, you know, all about our town in Inglewood. And it's been here for how long? 30 years. And it is a debt-free radio station, yes. So if you could call in and support, and if anything, be entertained, because Pastor is pretty entertaining on the radio. <laughs> We have a new women's Bible study that is starting, What Love Is. It's a seven-week study on Monday nights from 6.30 to 8.30. The, um, the date start is changed. It's now beginning on September 25th. Thank you, Irma. And um, today is the very last day that you can sign up. So please, ladies, if you're wanting to do this Bible study, um, get signed up today. We also have a new men's Bible study uh, beginning October 9th um, on Monday evenings right here at our worship center at 630. I know Ronnie Jackson will be out there in the lobby for more information about this men's Bible study. So guys, a new Bible study for you to get involved in. That's it. I'm so glad that everyone is safe and back and has air except for Mitch and Elise. We're sorry and hopefully it'll come back on soon. Have a great day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Miss Rachel. <laughs> Dina, how are you doing on the Bible study, the ladies' Bible study? How many? You don't have a hundred? We need a hundred. We need a hundred. No, 75, okay? 75. Seven-week study. Seven-week study on what love is. You will love, love, love it. You'll be right in here. Use that big screen. It's going to be fabulous. And you get to just love on each other, ladies. Get to know each other. It's fantastic. And uh, the men's going to start in October. Just another one. Beautiful. Well, Mitch is coming and singing probably the most famous storm song that was ever written. The man that wrote this song wrote it about 150 years ago. And he lost his children to the sea in a storm. And out of that tragic, painful loss came this song that has probably blessed more people down through the ages during a time of, of loss like that than any other song. And uh, Miss Karen's going to join him on the piano. The song is, It Is Well With My Soul. Amen. Would you welcome Mitch and just tell him and Miss Karen we love them, we appreciate them. Amen. Sing it, son. Praise the Lord. Like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea bellows roll.
my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, it is well, with my soul. Praise the Lord, one of the best songs ever written. Beautiful. Man, praise the Lord. Thank you, son. Let's get on our feet. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's the way we are. It is well with our soul. You can take our stuff, but you can't take our Jesus. Amen. And we can have faith regardless of what happens in our life. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I've been through some really, really bad times in my life where I just, I, it was rough, hard. I ask you these things often, but you know what? Jesus, he, he never left me. He was with me. I made it. 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 That's what storms teach us. Amen. Not to complain. No. Not to blame. No. No, 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 no. Storms are a good time to hit the floor at the, at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Troubles come. I want to be holding on down to the ankles. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Got a great song. The song was written, I think, probably this year, maybe last year. It's been out longer than that. I'm sorry. Okay. That's how old I am. How many are like me? You hear a new song and thought it was written yesterday. You'll get there. One day you're going to be old like me, and yesterday's going to be like 20 years ago. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord. Holy Spirit. The word Holy Spirit in the, in the Bible, when you look at the word Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, it's a Greek word, paraclete. It's the one who comes alongside. The word paraclete. It never means flopping in the floor like a chicken or something. Or running around the church acting crazy. Excuse me. The word Holy Spirit means the one who comforts you. How many would say, Pastor Gary, I was scared this last week or so, and the Holy Spirit comforted me. The Lord brought me some comfort and some peace in my life. And that's just the way, that's the way it is, yes or no, amen? He's welcome. Is he welcome at your house? Is he welcome at your house even when there aren't a lot of storms? Amen? Say, is he welcome? Come on. <laughs> amen. I'm going to tell you one thing. He's welcome in this house. It's all right. You can cry here. You can, you can lay it down right here, baby. Whatever you're going through, right here. This is a place of comfort. Amen? Yes or no? Amen? Let's welcome him with this song. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Beautiful song. There's nothing worth more That could ever come close no thing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord. oh
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No feet can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of. My heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your praise is Oh, Holy Spirit You are welcome Come On the 15th of October, that's going to be a Sunday night, Sunday night. We don't do it very often, but at least a couple of three times a year, we have the praise team on a Sunday night where we just have an incredible concert together. Amen. So it's about a month away, a month after this storm we went through. I think it'd be an awesome time. 
We've got it scheduled. Invite friends. People from other churches usually like to come out. And us just together, we just worship as a community and they're praising the Lord. Amen. And you can count on it being fantastic music. Amen. And I, I really like that song that evening, okay? <laughs> we love that song right there. Thank you for giving. Uh, we did miss last week giving, and we're kind of church, and we're a debt-free church. We don't harp on you giving here. We ask you to give cheerfully as the Lord leads. If you can't give cheerfully, then what? Keep it. And uh, that's how we do. This is the Lord's church, and he takes care of our needs. Uh, but obviously, we missed last week, so there's a little bit more of a need, okay? Because it wasn't like the bills quit, amen? You understand? But I don't harp on that at all. I do want to tell you this, though. Uh, some of you might not be prepared today to help with an extra gift or want to be a blessing to the church. Box 121. Can you say that with me? Box 121. One more time. 121. Years ago, when we started fellowship, I went to the post office. And one thing you don't want to do is fight with a post office person. They'll take your head off, I'm telling you. But I went, they told me what our post office box is going to be. I went, no, I don't like that one. You thought I'd shot them or something. So finally, we persisted and they pulled out a list and we got to look at them. And I saw one, two, one, one to one, one to one, one to one. We love Jesus and we love people, one to one. And we got that one, amen? And uh, I still check the mail. That's what I do. I check the box. It blesses me. I get lots of notes of encouragement. And uh, through, it, we do, you know, radio, whatever, we get a lot of encouragement. So maybe you want to take box 121 and, and uh, send a gift. That's between you and the Lord. If something, you want to be a blessing like that. Totally. Amen? And some of you are not in any capacity able to do that. That's fine. Y'all got me? Yes or no? But today's offering goes to our general needs to help meet the needs of our ministry. And we thank the Lord uh, for your giving. Thank you so much. Amen. Rob, come pray for us, buddy. Back from Pittsburgh. I told Rob, he's been all over the place, but I told Rob this morning that about 1 o'clock, he and I are becoming enemies. Because the Vikings play the Steelers today at 1 o'clock. And you can count on me be not being late today. Amen. Come on. Come on. But thank you for giving today. Good to have you back, man. Your business going good? Good. Come on. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. Yes, Lord. We, we see you in so many things. We thank you for the protection. Thank you, Lord. We ask a special blessing on those that, that have been affected. Absolutely. Lord, go before us. Come aside us and behind us. Protect us, Father. Yes. Bless us this day. Bless our offerings and tithes so that they might be the, the good things that you planned for them. Lord, we love you. We trust you in all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, buddy. Thank you much, buddy. Thank you guys for giving. You're a huge blessing. Everything you see here is because we've just been giving. Amen. Thank you much. God bless you. Another old song from the past. 
And I thank God for the lighthouse. Oh, I owe my life to him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, he has shown the light around me. Oh, that I could clearly see. And if it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where would this ship be? Let's thank the Lord for Miss Karen and everybody that served us. They're all over the place. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man, I am full up. I've had a great day. I, I'm telling you what, when I miss church, I miss church. You understand that? I mean, y'all know I like football and things like that and love that. I love being a part of Lemon Bay, getting to go out on the football field and be on the sidelines on Friday nights. But nothing like church. Nothing even compares to me. And I didn't grow up in church. I grew up as a hell raiser. We didn't go to church. Only crazy people went to church. Okay? You know, and uh, I guess now I'm one of them. But I love church. It's the first day of the week. Say that with me. It's the first day of the week. Sunday's the first day of the week. It ain't the last day of the week. Oh, gosh. You know, Monday's the first. No, Monday ain't the first day of the week. Your Monday is crappy because your Sunday ain't no good. You got it? Yes or no? Get your Sunday straight. You can have a better week, man. Get to church and then go hit the golf ball. Get to church, then go to the beach and have a good time. You hear me? But church, man, it matters. I couldn't imagine it. I was just pitiful last week on a Sunday morning. So, but anyway, I'm back. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love it here. Thank you for being here. And it's not just the church, the thing, the church thing. No, it's you. You're who I love. You understand that? You matter to me. And I see new people, people I hadn't seen in a while. I love you. You matter to me. You're my friends. You get that? Yes or no? Well, thank you. And I feel loved. I feel loved all over town. Amen. Say but uh, it matters to me, and you matter. I'm glad you're here today. Let's go to the Word this morning. And Roger, you're going to push me really hard because we've got to get out of here. Amen? Because we're definitely having communion. Amen? So it's on Roger back there to run that machine and flash those lights, brother. Here we go. The first message this morning was, I trust my King. I preached two different messages on Sunday. This one, both messages taken from the Lord's Prayer. There's plenty. You could preach months on the Lord's Prayer. So it's not too hard to pull two messages from it. First one on trust. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. A message on trust. This message is on the Lord's Prayer. I pray to my king. I trust my king. And I pray to my king. How many did some trusting and praying over the last week or so? You did some trusting and some praying? <laughs> Amen. So it's fitting. Let's, let's look today. Let's see what we can learn from Jesus today. He's the one that taught the disciples to pray. A lot of people use this as a ritualistic prayer. Our Father, the in heaven, I'll be in the name of the kingdom, that will be done, and then we've got to go. It's called a football prayer to me growing up playing football. I was certainly not a religious young man, but I knew this. It's a football prayer. You get in the huddle. Here we go. Get huddle. Father God, in the name of the King, get us dead, 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 get us in the name of the Jesus' name, amen. Go kill him. Let's go. You know, that's what it was. Well, it's a little more than that. Amen. So let's look at it today. The Lord's Prayer should probably say it with me be called the what? It's a disciple's prayer. The Lord was always praying, the Lord was always talking to his Father. That's what we have written in the scriptures. But the Bible says if everything Jesus did was written in the scriptures, the libraries of the world couldn't contain them. So just imagine all the times he's talked to his father, talked to his father, talked to his father. He's praying to his father all the time. But his disciples wanted to pray like him. They wanted to learn how to pray. That's a good thing. And he was a good one to ask. It came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he stopped praying, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Can you imagine being close enough to hear Jesus pray? Amen? As he's praying, they go, my goodness, do I ever want to pray like that? Amen? 
And so he said, they said, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Say that with me. Lord, teach us to pray. You say, well, I'm not a praying person. I wasn't a praying person. I was a cussing person, okay? Words like GDF this. That's what came out of my mouth. It wasn't, God bless you in Jesus. It didn't come out of my mouth. I had to learn how to pray. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Dumbest thing you never do with prayer is trying to not, try not to be yourself. If you, you know, we pray like somebody else. We'll hear somebody, thee and thou and this and that and whatever. We don't do that with people we know and talk to. We don't turn into somebody else when we see our best friend. Oh, hi, now you're another joker. What is that about? Be yourself, amen? Teach us to pray. And the Lord's taught me to pray over the years, amen? And uh, people might not like the way I pray. I could give a hoot. You know who I want to like my prayer? Him, amen or oh me? And I aggravate people sometimes when other people are praying. I go, amen, yeah, mm, yeah. I was praying the other day, <laughs> was in football practice. And the boy prays at the end of football practice, which I love that, I love that, man. The boy's praying, and as he prays, I'm at the back going, yeah, hmm, hmm, yes, sir, amen, hmm. Because that's just me. And most of these boys aren't believers or Christians, you know. And the one boy, one big old joker over there after I got done, he said, I don't know if I told you this or not. He said, uh, it sounds like you just got, you just got done eating some chicken or something. Hmm, <laughs> yeah, hmm, yeah, man. I like chicken. I like praying. Come on. <laughs> Be yourself when you pray. Teach us to pray. Amen? Come on, see what we can learn real quick. Now, Roger, we can't be taking long breaks like that, okay? <laughs> After this manner, therefore, pray ye. After this manner, pray ye. He's trying to teach us how to pray. This manner, not this prayer per se, but this is the way. This is how we pray. This is a good, good guide for us to learn how to pray. The word manner, after this manner, Jesus speaking, is the word order or the word pattern. This is a good pattern for prayer. This is a good order for prayer. So let's see what we can learn about praying. The word manner does not mean what? It does not mean ritual. The, that, you don't have a friendship with somebody if when you get together, all you do is quote little things to each other. That's not a friendship. Right? So, you know, quote, 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 bye, see ya. God is a friend that sits closer than a brother. Talk to him like a friend. He knows your mess. He sees you. You don't see him like he sees you. He sees you naked. Outside and inside. And you're going to try to pull the wool on his eyes? Ain't happening. Talk to him openly. You understand? After this manner. Not ritual. Don't come to God reciting a bunch of stuff. That's not the deal here. See you later. Try that in making friends and see how many friends you have. Okay, every time they get together, they just recite something. I'd be like, bye, 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 bye. Okay, don't do that. Do not try to educate God when you pray. People do that. I'm a student of prayer over many years. People will tell God everything. God, you know the hurricane. Her name is Irma. <laughs> you know, she's a category five right now, down in, you know, at this latitude, Palanja two. How about this? Help! <laughs> hey man, say. I've watched people do this. They'll pray in church. They'll tell them a disease, everything the nurse said. I pray with a lot of people. I pray every Sunday morning in a truck. Y'all know that. They come here. I pray out in a truck for about 30, 45 minutes. I used to have a fellow pray with us. He don't pray with us anymore. I love him. But I'd sit up front and I'd hear, I'd get an education. He's educating God every Sunday. But after a while, he learned that you don't need to do that. Amen. It's just us jokers here in the truck. We're just regular folk. Amen. Say, yes or no? Don't Did I lose you on that? Don't educate God point. 
okay? Now, you don't have to tell him everything. He knows stuff, okay? He knows stuff, okay? He, he knows everything. He's all what? Knowing, okay? Don't try to educate him, all right? God wants to hear your what? So often we will have a ritual prayer, we'll have an educating type of prayer, and that's people that can't pray with their heart. Now your heart's not the boom, 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 boom. The heart, the Bible, that's that place inside of you, that's really your, your gut. We call it your gut. Down in your gut. You know where your stomach sometimes, you just feel butterflies, you feel things in your stomach? That's where God wants you to pray from. Where you really feel things. Where you really hurt. You understand, yes or no? Not up here. Now we want to pray with a brain, I get that. But I want to pray with my heart. Did you hear me? That's like even with music, music. People can have a great voice and they can hit all the keys and the notes. But there's a difference when someone sings with heart and they still hit the notes but they're taking and feeling is now going into that, into that note. And it's making a whole different song. Amen? So when I pray, I want to be real. I don't want to recite a bunch of stuff. I don't want to try to educate God. And I don't want to just pray for my head. I want to pray for my gut. Have you heard or not? Isn't it funny when your house might be blown over, you might lose your roof or something? Eh, it's funny how real you get with God, isn't it? Yes or no? Amen. How many have gone through some real crap in your life? Excuse my language. Some real problems in your life. And you could pray to God, all right. You just told him the mess, didn't you? Yes or no? And a lot of times you didn't say anything, did you? You just cried like a baby. Yes or no? Am I, am I telling the truth? Yes or no? Sure. And God hears that prayer. I love that. There's a verse over in Psalms that says, He puts our tears in a bottle. I don't know this is the scripture right offhand, but uh, he hears our prayer. Tears are a language, a song I used to sing years ago. Tears are a language God understands. Amen? So prayer needs to be real, just like every part of our Christian life. Would you say the prayer with me out loud? Here we go. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, how many felt like when we said that you needed to stand up? And that's all right. If you would have stood up, I would have said, that's fine. But this is a manner. He's teaching us how to pray. You understand? Now, is there anything wrong with saying this prayer like that? Absolutely not. No. But just think about on a friendship. You go to your friend. You tell him what happened yesterday. And the next day you see him and you tell him what happened, the same story that happened two days ago. And then you see him the third day later and you're still telling him the same story. You know, I mean, oh my gosh, he's gonna to wanna to take your head off. Yes or no, did I lose you or not? When you have a relationship with somebody, you know, it's okay to tell them what happened today. God wants to hear from you. Say, I matter. I have value. One more time, I matter. I have value. That's how God sees you. Your life matters to him. He created you in his image and in his likeness. Jesus gave his blood on the cross, shed it so that you could have everlasting life. He loves you. The Holy Spirit, the living God, indwells you, comes inside along you, comforts you. Matter of fact, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is there to teach us to pray. And that's not to say words that aren't understood. That's what many people think. The Holy Spirit is to teach us to pray in tongues. No, the Holy Spirit is the one that comes along and comforts you. He teaches us to pray when we, don't, when we can't utter things because of our brokenness, because of our pain. He's there to comfort and help us. Does that make any sense, yes or no? Just like a person would come alongside and put his arm around you or her arm around you when you're hurting and you're just weeping and they're holding you. 
And you're not talking with them much. But that arm on you and that love on you comforts you. And you might not have said a whole lot. But boy, do you feel better. Yes or no? Amen? See God like that. We see him over here as, as some force or some whatever. We're made in his image. We're made in his likeness. He had, the Bible says that Jesus had the same feelings and passions that we have. So why do we, why do we put him over here as some mystical whatever when actually you're created in his image? God is like you. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? We can't handle that, can we? Oh no, he can't be like me. The whole planet's going down. <laughs> Amen, say. But he is like you. Matter of fact, no, you're like him. You're like him. Did I lose you on that or not? That's hard for us to handle, ain't it? It's the truth. So when you pray, know who you're talking to. Know who you're talking to. This is huge. Say it with me, those two words. Our, that's who you're talking to. Our Father. Now Roger pushed me. Our Father. Our Father. Our, our, our. It's horizontal. I came up with this. I think I did anyway. Our is horizontal. Our Father, our Father, our Father. Do you see the horizontal going on here? He's our Father. I'm God's child, but I'm not God's only child. So many Christians act like they're God's gift to the planet. You're not the only Christian, okay? He's our Father. You hear me, yes or no? Quit treating people like they don't, they don't know the Lord or they ain't as good as you or whatever. It is off-putting. You hear me say, you pray one way, somebody else prays it. Now, I ain't talking about praying some other God. They're lost as a goose. You can only pray in Jesus' name. You must get, you can only, is that light going on for some reason? Do what? Well, I can see fine the way it was, but you do what you want to do. And it's bright though now. Turn it down. Do the other way. Thank you. Anything's better than that. So, our Father, horizontal, yes or no, you got it? How hard is this? Not hard. This tempers how I pray. When I think that God is our Father, you got a little miff with somebody else? Well, they got a miff with you. They got a problem with you. Maybe they praying to God just like you praying. Who wins? He's both of you, Daddy. That's a problem, ain't it? So, you know how it did in our house? I don't know how it did when you were growing up. If one did it and they couldn't figure it out, we both got beat. If you ain't gonna fess up, I'll beat you both. You understand? That cut, it, that cut down on a lot of tattling right there. I'm gonna tell you right there. You hear me? He's our father. I matter, but so do you. I matter, but so do you. The pastor doesn't matter more than you. Got that? Yes or no? We've messed that up in the church and a lot of denominations. We put a pastor up here on a pedestal. I appreciate your love and your encouragement and your, your admiration or whatever it might be. I appreciate that. Respect. I appreciate that. But equally, I should respect you. Hear me yes or no. Say, absolutely. He's our Father. Now, so our is horizontal. Father is vertical. Father is vertical. Our Father. Have I lost you on this little sign language stuff? Our Father. Vertical. The word is daddy. We look up to our who? We look up to our daddy. When you're a little boy. I watched little John over here a little bit ago. John, you're four, aren't you? Yeah, man, you're a good looking four is what you are. But I'm, he's over there in that seat. And I saw him looking up to his daddy. Remember that when you pray. You see how this is never meant to be a ritual say. When I'm just quoting some... We look up to dad. And we almost have a hard time. I had a hard time with this word being daddy. I had a hard time years ago because father just sounds more respectful. It sounds more godly. It's in the Bible. You mean it's the word daddy? It's the word daddy. 
Yeah, that is the word. You hear me, yes or no? That is the word. It's a term of endearment. It's a term of closeness. He is our dad. He's our daddy. How many have a hard time hearing that? Just be honest with me. You're not used to hearing it like that, are you? Yeah, it's just a little different, isn't it? I always called my daddy, daddy, not father. Now, if you call your father, father, that's okay. Hi, father. I don't know if you do that or not. I didn't. It was, hi, dad. Hello, dad. Hey, daddy. It's just, a, it's more personal term. Did I lose you or not? That's who he is. The king is my daddy. He's king of kings and lord of lords, and he's my daddy. That's crazy, ain't it? The king is the king, but the king's my daddy. How's that feel? Say yes or no. That feel pretty good, say. King of the universe is the king of the universe, but wait a minute, he's also my daddy. That means something, don't it? It's the king, it's the king. I watched this show last night on TV. I felt so sorry for these people in North Korea. How many saw that show on TV last night, North Korea? Yeah, well, pretty good show. Anyway, nobody's been behind there. Nobody's done any footage back in there. And everyone to a fault, every single one of them, from kids all the way up, believe that Kim Jong-un, KJU, loves them more than their own parents. He loves us more than our own daddy. That's the way they're taught. That's the way they believe. They're isolated. They think the king is their daddy. Eh. But guess what? The king is our daddy. Can we thank the Lord for that? Come on. We ought to thank the Lord for that. The king is my daddy. Amen. To a king, you would have to really be hard pressed to get an audience with the king. But if you his son or daughter, let him in. Amen. Say how many had a business? You ran a business, but your kids were allowed to come in and see you. Let me see your hand. If you had a business job, but your kids, if they called on the phone, they had a right to come in and talk to you. Yes or no? Amen? My kids still do that today, to this day, with me. If I'm counseling somebody, and I see on that phone, it's my children, I might even then even take a breath and say, excuse me one second, it's my daughter. You understand? Say, because of what? She ain't got but one daddy and I'm it. Amen? And Mitch, and now my little girls, Hannah, they can talk to me anytime. Yes or no? Amen? That's how he is. Beautiful. I'm taking too long, but if we don't get it all, we don't get it all. I don't pray for my condition. This is important. I don't pray for my condition, guys. We think, oh man, I'm in a bad way, so I'm going to pray for him right here in my condition. I got a bad condition. Maybe, maybe it's bad enough I can talk to him and he'll hear me now because it's really bad in my life, you know. I don't pray for my condition. I pray for my what? Position. I pray for my position. I am his child. You are God's child. Now, if you refuse to believe in Jesus Christ, he has nothing to do with you. That's tough, ain't it? He's not willing that any should perish. He wants all to be saved. Jesus gave his life on the cross, shed his blood. But if you reject Jesus Christ, he'll reject you. That's tough, isn't it? Man, if there's one thing you want to be, it's you want to be his child. You hear me, yes or no? You're creating his image and his likeness, but you must be born again. Did Jesus say that, yes or no? Did he say you must be, yes or no? Say, you must be, okay? So we don't pray from our condition, guys. We pray from our position. I am his child. How many ever had your kid tell you something stupid sometime? It was important to them, they're just stupid. Can I see some hands? Just stupid, stupid stuff they tell you. How many ever told you something? It really was a big deal to them, but it really wasn't a big deal at all. What a big deal at all? Sure. You pray from your position. You can talk to God about stuff that doesn't seem like it matters to some people, but if it matters to you, it matters to Him. Amen, yes or no? Talk to Him like that. I'm related to the King. I'm related to the King. Yeah, He's my daddy. Amen? Yes or no? Talk like that. Stop the ritualistic 
you know, I'm not saying stop it. If you feel like it's good and it's helpful to you, I'm not going to say quit it. But I would like to see you get into a more intimate, personal relationship with your God, with the Lord. You know, when I pray, Jesus is right at the right hand of God the Father. That's what the Bible says. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for us. That's what he's doing right now. And so when I pray, I don't know if it's because I'm goofy or what. But when I pray, I see Jesus. Not literally, but in my mind and spiritually, it's not that hard. I see him listening to my prayer. And hearing my prayer and taking my prayer to his Father. That's what means he intercedes on our behalf. The Holy Spirit helps me to pray, but as I'm praying, as a matter of fact, I see my feet when I when I, I see myself at his feet when I pray. I'm not looking at him in the eyeball. Hi. That's just me, though. That's just me. That's how I pray. See myself there at his feet. Humble. Amen. And you come to your father. I know when you're your, your dad, you can come to your daddy. I get that. But when you're a little boy coming to your daddy, it's, it's I mean, we got to keep that child relationship thing working when you pray. You hear me? Did I lose you on that? That child relationship thing with your daddy. And uh, I look at Danny and Abby now. They're six and nine. And when they talk to me, they talk to me like a dad, like a daddy. You understand? Now, as Mitch and Elise have gotten older, they talk to me like a friend. Does that make sense? I'll still knock them out, though. They know this. <laughs> but I still see myself as a child when I talk to God. Did that make any sense to anybody? I see myself needy, and he's my daddy. And I get images of, of Abby and Danny sometimes when they're asking me for stuff. Or they're wanting my help or they're wanting my comfort to help them with their boo-boo or whatever. Amen? That's just me talking. So he is our daddy. Not just my daddy. He's our daddy. Vertical. Our father. Now, beautiful thing I saw forms a cross. Our. Horizontal. Father. Vertical. That is a cross. Our father. Our Father, our Father, forms a cross. We're talking about the Lord's Prayer this morning. Keep looking. It forms a cross. We can call him our Father, and it's all because of the cross, guys. Do you understand that? He is our Father because of the cross. He's our Father because of the cross. Well, I don't believe in the cross. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, he's not going to be your Father. He's going to be your judge. You're hanging over hell, buddy, I'm going to tell you. You need the Lord. You need to believe in Him. You need to be saved. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Listen, He is our Father. It's all because of the cross. That's why we can pray. You think you can pray without Jesus? Say, the one at the right hand of God the Father making the intercession. He's also the judge. That's what the Bible says. He's also our lawyer. He's our advocate. The Bible says all this about Jesus. But you're going to go into... Talk to God Almighty, but you're going you to end run Jesus with Mohammed? I don't think so. You hear me, yes or no? You're not going to end run. You're not getting by anyway. There's no way to get to God the Father except Jesus Christ. Is that what he said, yes or no? I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen? The king is my daddy because of the cross. Say that with me. The king is my daddy because of the cross. But if you're going to rely on your good works, the king is my daddy because I'm a good person. Sleep well tonight. It doesn't, I wouldn't sleep too good. The king is my daddy because I give money to the church. That's a little shaky to me. The king is my daddy because of the cross. And I believe in Jesus Christ who died on that cross. Now I sleep well. Amen? Yes or no? Come on. But now in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes far off. You're made nigh now by the blood of Christ. He is our peace who had both made one. He's broken down that middle wall of partition between us and God. Thank you, Lord. Abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinance for to make him in himself of twain one new man. So making peace that 
he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the what? By the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. We come to Jesus Christ by faith. We believe that he died on the cross for us, and that gives us relationship with God. Amen? Hope I'm not boring you to tears. Just keep looking. Just keep pushing me a little bit, Rod. I'm going to have to fly a little bit. You can go, go online. You can check out some of these scriptures sometimes. I pray to my king. I've got about five minutes left. After this manner, pray ye, our Father. We looked at that anyway. Which art in heaven. Amen? Which art in heaven. Just push me, buddy. This speaks of God's sovereignty in heaven. He's, a, our, he's the judicial authority. Which art in heaven. My daddy is the sovereign king of everything. Doesn't matter what it is that I'm going through. My daddy's the sovereign king over everything. My daddy can remove anything if he wants to. But if my daddy doesn't choose to remove the, the pain in my life, then I'll live through it and I can make it because he's sovereign. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Just because he's king doesn't mean you say whatever you say and you get whatever you want. You ain't king, he is. Get it? Say, yeah, but he's my daddy. But you're not a spoiled brat. You don't get everything you want. Yes or no? He's still the king. He's sovereign. If, if he allows something in our life, it's going to be in our life. If he removes something in our life, he'll remove it. But either way, it doesn't change my position. He's still my daddy. And he's still king. He absolutely reigns. Know that when you pray. Know that when you pray. Who are you talking to? Man. You're not forgotten. He loves you. Just because you didn't get this, sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's wait. And then how we do our kids, yes or no? They come to us, daddy, daddy, daddy. okay, okay, okay. You go have a small breath. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's absolutely not, no. And sometimes we'll see, yes or no. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Our daddy, say it with me, is what? Holy, holy, holy. That's who he is. When you pray to him, you can rest assured he has your best interest at heart. Think that way. Believe that way. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. It stood above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. Two covered his face. Two covered his feet. Two which he did fly. One cried unto another, say it with me, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Here's Isaiah. Then said I, say that part with me. Woe is me. For I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. The Lord of hosts. The king is my daddy. He's holy, holy, holy. He's right, right, right. Many times I ain't, 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 and I'm wrong, wrong, wrong. But he's always right, right, right. He's holy, holy, holy. Amen. It's football time. I hear what you're doing. That was slick right there. That was slick. That was slick. Keep pushing me, Rods. Phones are going off. King Daddy, I know that's a little bit odd way to say it. You absolutely reign and you're always right. Say that with me. King Daddy, you absolutely reign and you're always right. Do you see how the Lord's Prayer is a little more than our Father who's in heaven, how to be the name of the kingdom of God? You see how it's a little more involved than if you really want to learn to pray, you need to, need to pay attention. Thy kingdom come. I'm doing my part. That's what I put. I'm doing my part. Thy kingdom come. What comes this way, what comes my way, I want to serve, I want to do. Thy kingdom come. A lot more can be said. I'm just breaking it down real fast now. Thy will be done. I'm obeying God's commands. Don't expect to be screwing around and pray to God and Him go, okay, no big deal. How many times your children do that? Your children come to you, they're absolutely wrong. What they're doing is horrible. But they say, hey, Daddy, can I do it? No! But we think we can get by with God like that. That's why we pray the little ritual prayer. To make ourselves feel better sometimes. No. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
Okay, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to obey your commands. Yes or no? Yes or no? How many of you ever had some problems with your kids before? You didn't hate your kids, but you had a little broken fellowship with your kids before. Anybody ever had that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Go to your room. Okay? Hush, I don't even want to talk to you now. Get out. Get, get, get. I'm a horrible father, aren't I? <laughs> Tough. Amen? Obey his commands. On earth as it is in heaven, I'm willing to serve here and now. It's just my words. I'm willing to serve here and now. A lot of people, you know, they, they, they're looking forward to go to heaven. They will live their life like they want to down here. I'll serve in heaven one day. Mm, probably not. Serve here and now. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Okay. Come on. Give us this day our daily bread. I'm relying on God to provide for me. That's what a storm is good for us when our power's out. I don't like it. I know it's inconvenient. But it causes us to be grateful. And that's a good thing. Forgive us our debts or our sins, our trespasses. When we pray, we should repent. When I pray, usually right up at the front, not before too long, I try to tell the Lord, forgive me for my mess in my life. Stuff I know, stuff I don't know. Okay? As we forgive our debtors, I'm not bitter or begrudging against anyone when I pray. Did y'all hear me or not? I don't pray that way. I don't talk about that. I don't talk with God like, oh, get them, God. You know, I just don't. Also, I try not to be bitter against anybody. What use is it? So, but so many people are bitter. I see it all the time. And your life is being wrecked by it. What's the big deal? That is your choice. If you're struggling with it, ask your daddy to help you with it. And call it what he calls it, sin. See your bitterness against somebody. Even if you were wrong, it's hurting you. Tell your daddy that this is hurting me. Forgive me, Lord. Get it out of my life. Amen or oh me. Lead us not to temptation. I'm walking the right path. Think like that. Pray like that. Live like that. Deliver us from the evil one. But you don't just pray that. You put on the whole armor of God. In Ephesians, that you might stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen or amen. Don't just whisper a little prayer. And deliver me from evil, even though you ain't making no effort to even try to fight him. You don't talk to your kids like that. Kids having problems with some kid on the school ground. I'll go and beat up the little kid for you. No. You're going to learn to stand up is what you're going to do. You're going to learn to stand up to him. You hear me? Even though I want to go beat the little kid up for him. But he's going to learn to stand on his own two feet. Amen or not? You fight Satan by putting the whole armor of God on. For thine is the kingdom. I am loyal to Jesus. Say that with me. I am what? I find it odd how many people aren't loyal to Jesus. We call ourselves Christians, but we think, you know, I don't want to be unkind, you know, and if they believe, they believe in Mohammed or whatever, that's okay. I'm cool with that. You shouldn't be cool with that. Why don't you stand for truth? Yes or no? I'm not talking about being unkind, but there is only one way to God the Father, Jesus Christ. Ooh, it's quiet in here. Your works isn't going to get you there. Your good looks isn't going to get you there. Some false religion is a false religion. It's not right. You can hug trees, pray to some big fat fella, whatever. It isn't going to work. Did you hear me? Yes or no? It's not going to work. Be loyal to the Lord. One thing about it, I'll go ahead and put you on notice right now. Mitch and Elise, they won't put up with any crap. Somebody talking crap about their daddy. Between the two of them, you probably better duck with Elise. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Because that's my baby girl. Yes or no? Amen. And I plan on the others being raised right now to feel the same way later. Amen. Why aren't we that way with our Lord? I'm not talking about being ugly to people. I'm just saying stand for the Lord. I'm loyal to the Lord. Can you say that with me? I am loyal to the, to the Lord and the power. I respect King Jesus. I respect his power. Amen. Respect him. And the glory I honor King Jesus, I honor the Lord. 
This is that prayer. There's a lot in that prayer, isn't it? I think the disciples, knowing them like I think I know them a little bit, they would thought they could get them a quick fix. <laughs> you know what I mean? Would you teach us to pray and then we'll go get a sandwich? There's a little more to it than that, okay? And that's what the church has done. Our fathers start having how to be in that kingdom come. See, it's easier, isn't it? There's a lot to this. Forever. King Jesus is my king for now and forever more. Pray like that. Boy, it just increases your power. Amen. What's that word mean? It is done. It's so. Pray like that when you talk to the Lord. I'm not saying he's going to fix everything. No. But you know what? He's king and I ain't. He's my daddy. He has my best interest at heart. He wants me to do my part and fight that good fight and walk the right way and do the right thing. But at the end of the day, when I've done all that, I'm going to rely on him that I'm going to make it through it if I have to, if I have to keep the mess in my life or whatever. Yes or no? Amen? That's this prayer. I pray to my king. Am I done, Raj? Thank you. Let's thank the Lord for his word this morning. Woo! That was rough. Man! Amen. Let's get on our feet. Let's get on our feet, not long, and then we want to go outside as we leave and have communion. Trust me, I know what time it is. You'll be fine. Come on. Let's pray together. Just with heads bowed, quietly, as we close. You've heard me say a bunch today, but pretty strong on a couple of things, and that is, that is, if you don't know the Lord... If you don't trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're pretending and you're fooling yourself thinking that God is your Father. God certainly is Creator. But Father is a relationship. It's a relationship. And we have that relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ His Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says God's not willing that any should perish but that all come to repentance. God wants you to be His child. He wants you to have a relationship with Him. Jesus paid the price, made it possible so you could have that relationship. But you and your stubbornness to refuse to believe, to keep saying, I'm a good person, I give money, I go to church, that's not a relationship. And that's not faith. That's you doing everything. When are you going to stop and bow and believe that He did everything. He did everything. He did it all. We're arrogant when we say otherwise. We must be born again. We must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you do that right now? Right now? Right now? Why hesitate? Why keep taking chances? Why, why, keep, why, why keep living a life of just really, it's not reality. You're praying to somebody you don't even know. How can you know God when you don't know His Son? Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Please, and get mad if, at me if you want to, it's okay. I want you to be saved. I want you to stop, 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 stop thinking you're a Christian when you don't believe in Christ. Are you ready? I'm ready to lead you in a prayer right now. It must come from your gut. Not just from your head. If you're ready to say yes to Jesus Christ, no to yourself, no to what you do, no to what, all your works or whatever, 
Our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. We're fixing to have communion where we celebrate his death and burial and resurrection where he shed his blood. You're not going to get around the blood. It's not happening. Humble yourself. Are you ready? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Any good I do compared to you is dirty. My goodness won't get me anywhere with you, Lord. But my faith will. I'm going to do it your way. So, Lord, I want you to know, best I know how, Lord, I believe in you. Deep down inside of me, I believe in you, Jesus. You know I don't understand it all, Lord. But best I know how, Lord, I put my faith and my trust in you. I believe you love me. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. And Lord, I'm putting my faith in you, not in myself, not in some preacher, some church. No, Lord. I put my faith and trust in you, Jesus. You're my Savior. You're my Lord. No one else. I'm coming the right way through you. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed one last moment, we're done. How many would say with an uplifted hand, Pastor Gary, I got it. It's clear as crystal. And I asked the Lord to come into my life today. I made that commitment to Christ. Can I see your hand up and down? I just am telling the truth. It's just the truth. It's what I did. It's what I said. It's what I mean. Quite a few of you. God bless you today. Father, bless these today that made that commitment. Bless us all, Lord. Trouble will come again. There'll be more hurricanes or there'll be more storms. I pray this message today on how to pray will help us starting right now and moving forward. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Now listen, we're going to have communion. You might say, well, no, I'm running out of here. No. Come on, let's go have communion. Can we do that? And thank you for saving us from that storm. Can we do that? Let's go. Come on, guys. We'll end with communion on.